everybody, welcome to our worship service, July 11th, 7th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to everybody here in person. Welcome to everybody, I don't know which camera we're at here. Welcome to everybody joining us online. Sure appreciate your presence here and there as well. Um, if you are joining us online, go ahead and give a nice little comment. Let us know you're here. Unfortunately, I don't have my phone with me, so I can't respond to anybody's comments or anything like that, but do share them especially when it comes to prayer and uh, praise time because we use those to help make some lists for the week. Um, if you have some prayer concerns, make sure you share those with us. Just a, a preview of what we got coming up for today. We are doing our second sermon of uh, another summer sermon series, and we're going to introduce you to the prophet Amos, and we're going to take a look at habits versus titles Habits versus titles, and we'll see a little bit about that. We have a special music that we recorded earlier in the year that might be a flashback for some of you. And today our litur liturgist is LaFawn Hammond, so I'm going to welcome her up, there you go, <laughs> to uh, do our gathering words, and please join us in those today. Um, God of grace and glory, renew us with your presence this day. We gather here to bless your name and offer you praise. Bless us with your glorious love and your guiding light. Strengthen us each and every hour through the power of your Holy Spirit and the wisdom of your Holy Word. In hope and joy we pray. Amen. <laughs> A song outside, but well, nature had other plans for us this week. With the smoke and the air quality, I didn't even think it was worth mentioning or bringing up other than to say, sorry, we're not doing it today. So we will have our opening song. The words will be up there, of course, or you can open up in your hymnals to uh, hymn number 139. We will read through the words, focus on them, and think deeply about them. We'll give you a minute or two to jot down some notes or share your thoughts with your uh, people there with you in your little group, and uh, then we'll move on. So this is praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Let's begin with verse 1. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who o'er all things so wondrously reigning, bears thee on eagle's wings, or <laughs> keeping maintaining, it's hard for me to see. God's care enfolds all whose true good he upholds. Hast thou not known his sustaining? Praise to the Lord, who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do, who with his love doth befriend thee. Praise to the Lord, who doth nourish thy life and restore thee begging thee well for the tasks that we are ever before thee. Then to thy need, God as a mother doth speed, spreading the wings of grace o'er thee. Praise to the Lord, O let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath, come now with praises before him. Let the amen sound from his people again. Gladly, forever, adore him. All right, take a moment to think about that. Sometimes when I'm, I'm uh, thinking about these the last few weeks, I focus on one word or one image and kind of really dive deep on that. So for me right now, I'm thinking about um, God as a mother doth speed with his wings oh, uh, sheltering me. So that's the image I have in my mind.
right, now we come to the time of our service where we open up the floor for the sharing of joys and concerns. Of course, if you're joining us online, once again, please feel free to share those in the comments, and we'll make sure that those get added to our prayer uh, lists and chains and, and different things like that. Um, but if you have a joy or concern here, please raise your hand, and I'll come around with the microphone. And then uh, when you get the mic, uh, sh share your name, and then as much or as little as you'd like. All right. First, I'd like to thank everyone that's been praying um, for my granddaughter. Um, she's seven, and she has kidney issues. Um, they took her to a specialist in Portland this last week, and um, he found that she's operating on about one and a third kidneys. The other one has some issues in it, and it's going to require surgery. Um, May had some kidney problems in the womb, and she had surgery when she was five months old in Spokane, and the in Spokane surgeons have never identified that she only had, was functioning on one and a third kidneys, and she's had problems all these years. So we give thanks to God that finally now we know what's happening and pray that um, it can be taken care of. So thank you for your prayers, and please continue praying. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, prayers for all of the people who are working on the fires, whether they are in a support role or whether they are actually on the front lines. Um, they are amazing people, and uh, if you have more than prayers that you would like to offer up for them, I know that they are taking contributions as well. And, and actually, what I understand, it, though I could be wrong, is that uh, that's better than dropping off goods somewhere because they don't always know what to do with those. So thank you so much. Thank you. My son lives out at Aha, out at Waha, as I've said before. Oh, Kathy Bostrom, and. <laughs> He, the fire is coming very close to him, and we've been very concerned about them, and he's not getting out, and I, it'll be the last minute if he does. So please keep him in your prayers, all the folks that are fighting, you know, fighting and working with the fires, too. What's your son's name? Kent. Kent, okay, thank you. I just wanted to add to that. I've been talking to Corey up at the Barn Guaja Barn Grill, and he's being really supportive. Uh, mainly what they do need, as Liz said, is donations, which they can use for whatever needs to be done rather than things, and um, they're having to evacuate all the animals. So if you know someone that might have pasture land or something. So they have a lot going, so it's not like it's desperate. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Please join me as we pray for these concerns and then all together for the Lord's Prayer. God, we come before you a trying week in the middle of a trying time, Lord. We lift these up to you today. We pray for May uh, LaFon's niece or granddaughter. Granddaughter, thank you and uh, for, for the uh, prognosis that she has received about her kidneys. We pray for her health, and we pray for uh, just a solution to that. We pray for her peace of mind during this time, and her family, of course, too, that they'd be there surrounding her with love and, and, uh, and uh, that uh, they would loan their strength to her during this time. Lord, we also pray, of course, for everybody being affected by these fires all over, all around us, uh, and we lift up to you those now who are fighting those fires, who are stretched thin and running on uh, just lots of overtime and not a lot of sleep, and, and uh, we thank you for the community's effort to help them renew their strength in a lot of different ways, but we continue to lift them up and pray as they battle these 
fires and for all the community support and volunteers who are helping out as well. We do lift up Kent to you and uh, we pray for his home, for his family and their situation there. We pray for all those who are fleeing now and having to evacuate and find places to stay and, and, and uh, temporary shelter. Lord, we think of the animals who are <coughs> also needing to be evacuated and brought to pastures and different places. We're thankful for the open space that we do have. We just pray for them and their health and well-being too. And of course, here in the valley for everybody impacted all as well by the air quality of the smoke and, uh, and, and the heat. Um, we just continue to lift up this valley to you and anything that we can do at all to help provide any type of respite or resource, Lord, please uh, give us those channels and, and allow us to, to take those. Lord, we uh, offer these to you now and so many other things that we carry with us when we walk through the doors. I'm sure there's lots of other stories. You know where we are and what's going on in each and every one of our lives. So we lift that up now to you, God, and we pray as you taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time of on, we'll come forward with today's uh, scripture reading from Amos and from the book of Psalm. Can you this one? Amos 7, 7 through 15. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a palm line and a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then um, Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jerome of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all of his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to a Amos, O seer, go, flee away from the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Psalms 85, 8 through 13. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak to peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make a step path for his steps. Here in a three.
to children's moment. Um, today we're talking about something that was mentioned in the scripture, a plumb line. Now, I had to look it up because I'd never heard of it before. Apparently it's a string with a weight at the end that allows builders like carpenters and other people who like craftsmen to know if they're building something straight vertically. Um, so I was curious, you know, I've never heard of this before, never used one. So I looked around for things that I could use to make one because it seemed like a pretty straightforward concept. And this is what I found because, you know, pardon the extra noise. Uh, my puppy is past her bedtime and going a little crazy right now. If she romps this way, I'll introduce you. Um, anywho, so this is what I found. It's a weight with the pointed end at the end of a string. So, as random as it is, it does appear to be working. We will try it. Um, what we're going to try it against is this frame that I've built. Uh, I've just started trying to ex kind of experimenting with building things. Not 100% great at it. Still learning. So that's fine. Um, and I built this two days ago-ish. I just learned about what plumb lines were two hours ago. So I'm kind of curious to see how well I did without even knowing what I was doing it for, like what I was trying to line up with. Um, so we're going to go ahead and see. I'm going to move this forward so that you guys can better see. So let me get this ready. Okay, so it's needs to be leaning, being a little stiller. And then it goes here. And so it starts well up here. Matches well for a little bit. If it could stop moving. Then it slowly gets further and further and further away. So this is not plumb. I'm not surprised. Because again, I'm still learning. Um, and it looks like this might be a very good tool for me how to learn how to better match things up. Better line things up as they need to. Um, and... That's kind of what they're talking about in scripture today, too. God was talking about helping the people line up a little better with what he was talking about. Uh, Cody will get into that more. I'll let him. For now, I just wanted to give you a heads up on what that interesting little tidbit of information means. And I wanted to show you kind of what they're talking about. Um, if I were to build this again, I might have used it, because if I want this frame to work with anything else, it would have been helpful for it to be plumb, and for it to be square, and able to be put well with other things. That's not how it worked out, so that's okay. But, um, in the future, I look forward to learning, using one of these to help me put things straight, put things where they need to, as I move forward and build. All right, let's go ahead and have a prayer. Take an attitude of prayer, whatever that is for you. Dear Lord God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for all the help you provide us in finding our way forward. Please continue to be with us and those around us as we continue to learn and grow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, and you guys have been such a good audience. I'm going to bring you around. Pardon any mess that you may see as we go. This is little Luna. Say hi, Luna. She is four months old and the cutest little thing. And also sometimes the loudest little thing. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. <clears throat> so, yes, we are going to talk about this prophet Amos. And if you remember last week, I introduced our new sermon series where we're going to be examining the life of a different prophet every week. Who remembers who we talked about last week? Anyone? Good job. Yes, nailed it. Wow. Actually, that reminds me of a, a joke. Uh, I, so I did a memorial on a Friday 
for uh, Gay Laverty, a longtime beloved member of the, of the uh, Clarkston congregation. Uh, she actually passed away in October. We weren't able to have any uh, memorial for her, so we actually finally had it on Friday. And it was actually a wonderful celebration time, very happy. Of course, some bittersweet memories, but afterward, this little boy, his name's Andrew Wilson, he's, uh, his family is uh, our members of the Clark's Church, he came up to me and said, <coughs> I have a joke for you, Cody, Pastor Cody. How, uh, how did the hammerhead shark do on his test? And I thought for a second, I said, I don't know. And he said, he nailed it. So Doug nailed it like a hammerhead shark. All right, good job, Doug. <laughs> okay, so yes, last week we talked about Ezekiel, and we talked about reacting versus responding, and how sometimes, you know, when we receive some bad news or, or hard message, remember we talked about how Ezekiel, a lot of these prophets were given hard messages to deliver, and we discussed the difference between reacting to those messages and responding to the message. The reaction is just like immediate, like, oh, no, I don't want to hear these bad, strong, hard, harsh language. Responding is much more like, okay, let me take a deep breath. Let me hear what this has to say. Maybe this applies to me. Maybe I need to grow from this and learn from it. And that's what we kind of talked about a little bit. This week, today, we're going to talk about Amos. Amos is an interesting prophet, and we'll get into his background a little bit. But before we do, uh, who in here has seen the movie uh, the Karate Kid. Anyone seen the movie The Karate Kid? <laughs> yeah, growing up was one of my, yeah, you've seen it too? Even the old ones with Daniel Sun? Yeah, love that movie growing up as a kid. I watched it quite a few times. And you might remember when Daniel is needing to learn karate, you know, he wants to defend himself against some bullies. He goes to Mr. Miyagi, and Mr. Miyagi says, Yes, I'll teach you. But as the weeks unfold, he's not really teaching him karate, is he? What is he doing? He's, ma yeah, he's making him do things like paint the fence. He's making him do things like famous, like wax on, wax off, right? And after weeks of this, Daniel is upset because I'm supposed to be learning karate here and all you're having me do is your, your chores, basically, right? But what Daniel discovers is that Mr. Miyagi is helping him learn the correct habits of karate so that he knows the motion of that. Like, in a moment, they just come to him, right? Wax on! Wax off! And I know, it's a, bit, it's a little contrived. It probably doesn't quite work that way. But the principle is pretty solid, right? If you practice these good habits, they just become second nature to you. And we're going to talk about that a bit in the life of Amos. Um, we're going to talk about how he has this on-the-job training. <clears throat> now, when people ask you about yourself, when you meet new people, most of us, what do we do when we introduce ourselves to somebody? What do we, how do we introduce ourselves? My, my name's Cody, and I'm... Oh, okay, where I'm from, some of you might say. What I, yeah, a lot of us say what I do. And I'm a pastor. And I'm a... Uh, uh, covert operative for the, no, I'm just kidding, I'm not, I know you're not covert, but uh, you know, I, I work in, uh, I work in forestry, or I, you know, I work, you know, those, I'm an accountant, so we tend to tell people, you know, who we are, or what we do, or maybe even what we did if we're retired, so my question is, do our roles make us, or do we inhabit those roles, do you understand the, kind of the difference there? Do we bring ourselves into those roles and we make those, those roles? I, maybe it's a bit of both of those things going on um, in our truth to some extent, but I believe that we are not simply what we do. We're much more than just simply I'm a pastor, right? There's much more to me than that I'm a pastor. I think my whole life and your whole life has been shaped by how you do the things that you do. And let me talk a little bit more about this. So there is a risk in any of our lives, and this happens, you know, I don't know. I don't know if this is an American thing or a Western thing, but a lot of us tend to lose ourselves in our role, don't we, right? Like somebody was talking to me the other day, and I, it hit me like really hard. <laughs> like this person was like, I'm retiring at age 70. 
And, you know, life expectancy is what? Where, where, where? where? Maybe 86? Actually, it's lower than that. It's, it's below 80. Did you know that? So he said, I'm retiring at 70 just to have maybe at best 12 years to enjoy everything that I was working for to get there. And I thought about, wow, isn't that so true that sometimes we lose ourselves in our role to the point where it's just, that's our life for the rest of our lives, okay? And that, that's not, I mean, if you truly, like, that, that's in some cases a good thing, right? If you are bringing goodness to the world and you're like, I so am in love with what I do and, like, I couldn't picture myself doing anything else. But I also, at the same time, do not want anybody to um, negate who they are. Sw uh, uh, be swallowed up into the role. Now, I bring this up because Amos doesn't have this problem, all right? Amos, as this prophet, does not uh, have this problem. In fact, he's kind of an ironic figure. He is a prophet who denies he's a prophet. <laughs> he denies that I am a prophet. In fact, he makes it clear. It, you, read it, you heard in the scripture there, as he's talking to the king, he says, I'm, I am not a prophet. I am uh, what did he say he was? Do you remember from the scripture? I'm a, I'm a shepherd, and I tend to trees. I'm a gardener, right? I, I uh, tend to trees. So he says, even makes clear, I'm not a prophet. I'm not even a prophet's son. He's making a claim about this particular part of a lineage, and he's not inherited this status at all. In fact, he's rejecting this title completely. I'm not a prophet. This is not who I am. And I have to give you a little better background about this, why I think he's doing this. <clears throat> it, it comes from what he mentions right afterwards. He, he's basically rejecting an ideology that comes along with what people understood prophets to be at that time. And here's why. In his day, there were prophets. They were temple prophets. They were, it was a status, it was a title, it was their job. They were paid to do this job, to be prophets, to bring, this, to bring uh, messages. In his day, there were temple prophets. They were essentially, tell me if you hear a little bit of conflict of interest here, they were essentially on the king's payroll, okay? So if you're, <laughs> if you're a prophet and your job is to deliver messages to the king from God, but you're being paid by the king, what might happen to your messages? Yeah, there might, there might be a conflict of uh, some interest there. You know, I got to keep my, you know, the, both sides of my bread buttered. Is that, is that a saying? Am I using that right? Okay, cool. All right. So, but Amos here is essentially distinguishing himself from that group. He's saying, I am not a prophet for a hire. I'm not on payroll. I don't do this for a living. I'm not defined by this affiliation. But here is what defines me what I've done, which is I've responded to God's call. You know, King, you might want to think about why God is calling me to come speak to you and not one of your prophets, one of your temple prophets. And what he basically says is I was already busy with my own work when God called me to do this. I had to leave what I was doing, <clears throat> excuse me, to come deliver this message. Now, what was Amos's message? They're not... It's not a happy message, all right? Here's where I want to make sure you understand what a prophet really is. Most of us, when we think of prophets or prophecy, what do we think? They're do, yeah, they're predicting the future. This is what will happen. And, and a lot of times that does line up. That, that is what a prophet is doing. But literally, prophet or prophecy literally means a message, delivering a message. So it might have something to do with the future. Oftentimes it has something to do with what's happening right now. This is what you're doing. And if you don't stop, or if you don't start doing something else, this is what can happen if you keep doing this. So they're not so much predicting the future as in like, hey, this is what you're doing. And if you keep doing it, this is what can happen in the future. And his message is, listen, you're going to be defeated by a military, by another nation. And the, um, the uh, nation of Israel, their house, the king of Jeroboam, is going to fall. It's not good news to this religious leader in Bethel, Amaziah the priest. 
Uh, he, again, on the royal payroll, so he does not like this message he's hearing. He thinks Amos' words are treasonous and tells Amos to go away. Go do this in another country. Go do this somewhere else. All right. If he were uh, alive today, they might say, why do you hate your country? If you don't like it, leave it. Right? You ever heard that message before? I heard people say that about people delivering a message or speaking a message. But here's the thing. Amos' response after what Amaziah says to him is very critical. I think this is what tells us who Amos is in his everyday life, and I think it's what prepared him to be a prophet, even if he doesn't claim the title. Now, Amos did not become a different person simply because he's delivering a message and becoming a prophet. This assignment did not change who he was, is what I'm getting at here. He is still who he is. He brought himself into this work. And what was he? What kind of person does Amos become in the midst of his everyday life and work before he's called to be a prophet? So he mentions, I'm a herdsman. I'm a shepherd. What does a shepherd do? Has anyone ever... So I grew up in uh, southern Idaho. And in southern Idaho, there's quite a few uh, sheep and herds. There's cows too and that, and that type of thing too, but there were a lot of sheep in our valley that would, uh, they would kind of um, roam through the valley, you know, eating, and, and they would ask for permission, you know, from farmers. Can we, hey, we you know you just gleaned your field. Can we come through with our sheep? And most people would say, yeah, and they'd set up a sheep camp. And they'd have a, a little trailer, you know, that they'd live in, and why did they do that? Why do sheep live in the, or why do shepherds live in the trailer right there with their flock of sheep? Does anyone know? Yeah, yeah. Sheep aren't very smart, right? That's true. Some animals you can just leave and you can come back. Sheep, not so much. You've got to live with the sheep. You've got to be almost like, right? You, 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 it's a 24 7 job most of the time until, you know, they're delivered somewhere or brought somewhere. Yeah, sheep aren't the smartest. They need t- tons of care, tons of nurture, tons of protection. They need a little bit of tough love every now and then. So um, you're starting to see why a shepherd might be the perfect role to shape somebody who has to deliver a tough love message to a nation who is wandering away from what God has called them to, like, well, like sheep do sometimes. Yeah, a shepherd knows about getting dirty. A shepherd knows about getting down there with the flock. A shepherd knows how to care, protect, and also on occasion use the old shepherd's crook, you know, every now and then. A shepherd knows this type of work. Not only is he a shepherd, though, he says he does something else. I uh, dress sycamore trees. I'm a gardener. I make sure the sycamore grove grows just fine. He mentions a plumb line, you know, later growing. And what does a gardener do but checks in on the, the, um, the uh, foliage to make sure that it's flourishing, that it has everything it needs to grow, right? What, do, what, do, uh, what does a garden need? How does a garden grow? Yeah, and you have to make sure it's getting all that stuff. Now, could I just go throw out a seed and, uh, you know, come back? Now, it depends. Some seeds, sure, you can just toss out there and they will grow. But some things take a lot of really, especially in the beginning stages, a lot of care, observation, um, adjustment where needed. I need to get it more water. I need to give it less water. Maybe I need to move it out into the sun a little bit more. Maybe I need to move it away from the sun and into the shade, you know. It, some plants are persnickety, right? They are very, they, they take a lot of care. So a shepherd and a gardener, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest those are perfect for what a prophet needs to be. Shepherds make sure a flock is well nourished. Gardeners manage the growth of plants. Amos is a cultivator of living things. Israel, the nation, is a living organism. And their nourishment and the growth of the nation are dependent on people who know how to shepherd and garden. Amos has developed these life-giving habits 
through years of practice herding sheep and pruning trees. Amos is proof that our habits are far more important than our titles. What we do and how we do it every day, day in and day out, reflect character and identity. So Psalm 85 comes in. I had uh, LaFon read this to you, and it gives us a picture of God who's just like a shepherd and a gardener who cultivates people with salvation and peace. So the image that we get in Psalm 5 is very, um, I, I think it tells us a lot. It tells about glory dwelling in the land, faithfulness that springs up from the ground, righteousness that comes down from the sky. Okay, so these three things, faithfulness, righteousness, glory. The land, the ground, the sky, all intertwined in the life of a shepherd and a gardener, right? <laughs> one thing a shepherd and one thing, two, there's several things that shepherds and gardeners need. Ground, uh, uh, the space to grow, and the, the land, the ground, and the sky, all intertwined in this dance of uh, the natural world. God's engagement with people is, is ten times more uh, magnificent than Amos's engagement with people. But that is the model that we should follow and embrace, following God's ways in the world. So, prophetic life. I don't care if you have the title or not. I don't care if you are uh, like, like me, like you have a title of minister and you get to deliver, you know, uh, speeches every week, calling people to action. I think that your daily life your daily habits are what cultivate and allow life to flourish in you and in those around you. I think you may not be a, her, a, sh, a, a shepherd, you may not be a gardener. Actually, a lot of you probably are gardeners here, but you are called to help life grow in the healthiest and most meaningful ways. Amos, in the book of Psalms, I think we see a prophet that, or a reminder that the title prophet is not so much a title as it is how you live your life. What, what message are you delivering to people in your day in and day out life? Because that's what people really do pay attention to, right? Far more than what you actually say with your words. You know this, many of you as parents, right? You, you, you can tell your, your, your children over and over, you know, you really shouldn't do this thing. You do it once, and they will, yep, uh, hey, now, you told us we're not supposed to do that, and here you are doing it, right? You just do it one time, and they will catch you. And I'm not going to tell you what the one thing is that I've done that my children you know, catch me, have caught me with, but you all have those stories, I'm sure, in your life. So if, like, well, or if you were a teacher, oh, Miss so-and-so, you told us we weren't supposed to do that. and Yeah, they watch you. They watch you to see if your day-in, day-out life matches up with your message because that truly is your message, your day-in, day-out life. All right, let's pray, and we'll move on to our uh, offering time. <clears throat> God, we thank you so much for uh, the examples of these prophets, their lives, and how they responded to you. We're thankful for Amos who could care less about, couldn't care less about uh, titles and what that means, but simply lived his life day in and day out, and that became the tools and the message that he needed to deliver. As a gardener, as a shepherd, he was uh, perfectly matched to bring a message to hopefully bring flourishing and nourishment to the nation. Lord, I pray that in our lives, we would bring messages to help people flourish in their lives too. That they would see in our day in and day out lives a message of growth and care and nurturing and grace and love and hope. We love you, God, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now let's uh, go to our offering time, and I'm going to go grab the offering plate, and I'm going to walk it around as I do. I'm going to share with the folks online some ways that they can give uh, if they're not here in person, let me grab my, I don't know where I put my mask. There we go. 
All right, so one of the ways that you can give if you're joining us online is you can mail in a check. And if you're joining from the Clarkston, uh, if you're a member of the Clarkston congregation, there's the address there, and the Lewiston address is right there too. And you know, if you're here in person, this is a way you can give too, if, you, if uh, being here doesn't work for you, uh, giving it here. But yeah, there's the uh, addresses, or you can drop them off at the office. You would just call ahead and make sure that somebody is in the office. Both offices are open for regular office hours, but just call ahead and make sure somebody's in. Another way you can give is through online giving. Both churches have a way to give online. If you go to the Clarkson website, it's that big green button on the right-hand side. Just click that and you can give. Or on the Lewiston Church, also over on the right-hand side, there's a drop-down menu in the Contact Us, and you just hit that Donate button, and you can give that way. Or there's also mobile giving. Both, uh, both churches have a mobile app you can give through. For the Clarkson Church, it is the Tithely app, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Look for that, download it, then search for Clarkston UMC, and you can give that way. For Lewiston First, it's the Give Plus mobile app. Just search for that in your app store, put it on your phone, then search for Lewiston First UMC, and you can give that way. Now, a special giving focus. As the people mentioned during our prayer time, there is a need. There, there are some items that you can bring to the Red Cross um, evacuation centers, they are looking for Gatorade and Powerade, snacks and granola bars, anything that's heat resistant and shelf stable. You might check with the grocery outlet. They have, you can actually just buy the stuff there and they do deliveries. Also call the Asotan City Hall or I believe, is there one more slide? There you go. Yeah, check with the grocery outlet of Soton City Hall. I'm sorry, I started to write the phone number, and then I thought, well, they can look it up because I was running out of room. But if you need that number, let me know, and I'll get it to you. You can also call the Clarkston Fire Department or Rescue One or the Soton Fire Department. And there are lots of businesses in the area as well doing, uh, accepting some donations, money, different things like that. You can give to them directly. If you give to the church today and you want some of that to go, just... Make, sure, make a note, and we'll make sure it gets to um, some of the folks who are, I think, uh, Patriot Insurance is doing one. Uh, a couple of the banks are doing one. We'll make sure it gets there, all right? So consider doing that today, tomorrow, this week, and do definitely call any one of those places, and they can get you going in a good direction, too. Let's pray for our offering today. <clears throat> God, we do thank you for your love, your care that you desire for us to flourish and grow. Lord, I pray that the offering we take today, that you would bless it, that we would use it to help people flourish and grow. And also, Lord, of course, we pray for all the firefighters, all those who have had to be evacuated. We ask that uh, um, people who can give of uh, monetary ways that they would do so to help uh, all these people who are impacted and affected. And Lord, we pray blessings on that as well, those funds. Lord, we love you, and we ask all this in your son's precious name. Amen. have one more song to uh, read through the lyrics there. It is uh, hymn number 369 if you have your hymns and you want to open it up. But the words will also be on the uh, screen for you there, I believe. Yes? <laughs> there we go. Blessed Assurance, a good one. Uh, the, uh, I looked up the history of this one. I'd encourage you as well to go uh, search for the UMC resource website or the discipleship website has a whole, I mean, hundreds of hymns that they have collected the history of, the emphasis in writing, the kind of the backstory. Very interesting stuff. I encourage you to search for these hymns and to look 
up those histories. Let's begin with verse 1. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. All right, take a moment to kind of reflect on some of those words, and uh, we'll have uh, the plan in the background there a little bit. before I send you off with a uh, benediction as uh, we've talked about the last few weeks or well really the psalm or you know about the zoom prayer meeting that happens on Saturday nights uh, 5 30 p.m. Pacific time let me know if you need a link to join that and join us for prayer catch up with some folks on the week but just to offer up some prayer as well and as we've mentioned the last few weeks, this will probably be the last week I mention it. Maybe I'll mention it one more week, but we have our book study coming up in the fall. Seven Stories is the name of the, of the book. And if you need help getting a copy of that, let me know. I'll make sure that you can get one. It is available pretty easily in electronic form for uh, Kindle through Amazon. Um, but a little bit harder to get physical copy, but I'm pretty sure we can get one for you. So just let, let me know. Interesting study, really good book. Uh, really good study through scripture. It's pretty in, pretty in depth. The, when you're done with it, I may grant you an honorary master. So just 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 to let you know, all right. Uh, but let me know if you want one. And uh, as always, DVDs, audio available for any of the uh, uh, services that we have. If you want any part of it, you know, a special music piece, a a sermon in particular, you know, anything at all, let us know. We'll. We'll hunt it down. We've got it saved, and we'll make sure you get that piece that you need. And I think that's it for announcements, unless there's something else anyone wants to make sure we're aware of in the uh, community. Anything coming up? All right. Yes, Michelle. That's right. And... As we, I've shared this, it is okay to share this public, yes, okay, so I've been sharing it on the, uh, with the prayer groups, but Michelle will not be able to participate in at least golf for sure this year. Uh, was, I know you were looking forward to it so much when we talked on the phone and you were super excited, but Michelle has to have knee surgery on, on the 19th? Yeah, on the 19th, so please pray for Michelle, pray for the surgery, of course, and recovery, but also for her uh, spirits missing out on golf. I know you're really looking forward to that, so please be in prayer for Michelle as well. Yeah. Uh, any other 
announcements. And yes, let's pray for the, uh, the, Olymp- the, the Special Olympics teams and, and the Olympics team traveling overseas as well the, to, to Japan, yeah, and all that stuff. So, okay. All right, with, the, with that then, we're going to move to our benediction time. And uh, I will read the non-bold type. You'll respond with the bold purple type there. Brilliant children of light, go now to shine with God's glory and love. Honor God with all that you say and do. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you.